I almost forgot Mars has a volcano. Yeah, that's me at work. <laughs> All right, welcome back everyone to Hot Lava. Today, we get to tackle what is actually my favorite of the worlds. This is Wholesale. Uh, I'm sure you can guess, but this is actually a level based on a rather popular uh, wholesale retail chain that I <clears throat> have many fond and not fond memories of, but this series of levels is easily my favorite in the game, and uh, pretty sure you'll see why once you kind of see what the levels themselves look like. <sighs> I love it, there's... <laughs> You haven't gotten a good day up there it is there's just this giant castle of uh <laughs> soda boxes but as you may notice this level or these levels in this world have a lot of wide open spaces and a lot of different ways to approach uh every checkpoint so as you can see i completely skipped that second checkpoint simply by jumping off of the putty to a higher level path. So, and here you can see I'm actually crawling through these little tubs of whatever it is, jumping around the back of this thing, and there's a checkpoint right here. So this is the world where I feel like they really put in a, a lot of care into designing the courses, so that there you have as a player, a lot of options for uh, getting around the level. So we make them a blast to explore, and besides, if you've ever been to uh, the store this is obviously based on, like, who didn't want to do stuff like this when they were a kid? Like, this always just looked so cool, and finally get a chance to live out those fantasies all these years later. Like, it's, it's just so much fun. But the goal of this first level, you start at the bottom by the checkout stand, and you just have to kind of get to the top as quickly as possible. A lot of jumping around on top of the shelves, and I completely missed a pole to swing across to make that a little safer, but not at all a problem. And as you can see, target time of three minutes, and I had almost a minute to spare by the time I got here, just by take oh. <laughs> The only way your toys will survive the biohazardous plague of the future. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, leaving that one where it is. Alright. But, first level done already. And, you can already see the second level. Uh, one of the nice things about this world is, whereas uh, playground and school are kind of spread out where the levels are, uh, this one, they're all basically in the same area, so you never have too much of a commute before the next one. Alright. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the back of the warehouse. Always such mysterious things going on back here. That takes us into the food court, and a little bit of a her relatively big shortcut here, because you skip three or four checkpoints just by doing that. A little bit of a tight jump onto the pole, and if you don't get your bounce right, you fall in the lava. But if you do, you shave <laughs> shave an easy 30 or 45 seconds off your time. And got this nice little part where you get to go through the bottom, skip some more checkpoints. That's basically going to be the name of this this world is how many uh, checkpoints can we skip by bouncing somewhere the uh, devs may not have intended. So this, I, I actually figured out how to do that jump later. Uh, not that way, but it paid off because I, I found it jumped up to a new checkpoint that I didn't know was there. You can actually see the pin off in the distance. I'll have to try to get that at one of these points. But not right now. Just as the level name promises, you jump across some ducts. 
I kept thinking this was a level where you actually go in the ducts, but that, uh, that comes later. And just another uh, jump around a pallet to hit the end of the level. Yeah, look at that. A minute 30 seconds versus seven and a half minutes my first time through. go from here. Uh, they really did a great job of recreating the look, and it is just as satisfying to jump around this area as, as I always thought it would be. Right, here we go, into the meat market. I feel like keeping frozen... Oh. Yes, the uh, meat does shove you around. Uh, it also kills all your momentum when you touch it, so... Probably best if you don't. That being said, I, uh, lava seems like a... new and controversial way of cooking meat in store, but you know what? More power to them. Yeah, right here, just skip a checkpoint by making a jump early. A lot of the uh, shelves in this have a way that you can climb up them from the inside, so it's always good to know you can do that. Come over here. Pretty sure you're supposed to pr approach this from much lower, but you can just, as long as you don't drop straight onto the checkpoint, you won't die, so I just like to fall on top of it. Yeah, more climbing across the ducts. Uh, actually looks more like that might be a pneumatic... Never mind, I don't know what that is. That had a radiation sticker on it. Um, I, uh, <laughs> this store seems like it's up to no good. But we just swing across here. You can already see the end of the level, so. Oop. <laughs> yeah, missed the jump I was aiming for, but caught it during the window, so I made it anyway. Sometimes you're not punished. That's the sad thing about this world, is that like I love the design of the levels, I love how they're laid out and the ways you get through them, but if you do it right, they are so short, so this world tends to go super quickly. Okay. Heard a little bark. Uh, <laughs> there's a little dog you can find in each world called Buddy. Um, uh, well, I'm sure we'll cover him eventually. The name of the next mission is Returns, and of course, since this is laid out almost exactly like the real store itself, I already had a pretty good idea of where to go. Alright. The first several jumps in this level are much tighter than they look. I can't tell you how many times I missed them when I was recording this. You gotta really be careful here. Uh, on this side, you can actually <laughs> jump on top of that box and use it as a platform. But, get this nice stack of tires we get to jump up. <laughs> Very carefully, because uh, it's a long way down. Coming up over here, continuing to jump on top of these chain link fences. And here you actually have to jump onto the banners. Uh, you don't have to jump to the second one like I did. You should be able to survive that fall without dying. Uh, I was just trying to be safe about it. Yeah, you heard the little sound there. Uh, if you don't jump when you hear that sound, you're not going to make that. Uh, I'm sure there's another way to get there, but if you're just jumping straight to it, you have to wait until you hear that noise. Alright, jump to there, run around behind some boxes, and we get down to the uh, long, flat carts that they always have. Pretty simple level, all things considered. Just that first maybe four or five jumps that are very tight, and the rest of the level is pretty simple after that. Okay. 
Okay. Here we go. Into... Oh, that's an encouraging name. Meat Grinder. Uh... I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I think this is... You can see you can actually just jump from the left side of that pole straight to the checkpoint. So much easier than what I did in that first level. So if you're playing this for yourself, do that, not what I did originally. Uh, this jump's a little tough because uh, the you're uh, not supposed to end up on top of the sign there, but I did. Uh, but that earlier jump, you actually have to land on the swinging pole. You may be able to jump to the alarm, I never tried that, but the pole that you would normally swing off, you have to land on top of it to jump around. So that is a very tight jump there. Alright, and now we're getting into the meat packing part of it. Let's see what they got for us here. Oh. Oh, this is... <laughs> uh. You know, something that feels kind of cool about all of these levels is... If you think about it, like, we know this is not what the inside of a big wholesaler meat section looks like. Just like it wasn't what the cafeteria in the school looks like. But in the mind of a child, or at least in the imagination of a child, that's, that's actually pretty clever. I like that. But we're out of the meat grinder. Got through that all successfully, so it's just a handful of jumps down to the end of the level. <laughs> uh, this is the first level where I noticed that um, the level of lava is higher in some of the missions than it is in others. You can actually see most of the castle is covered in lava here. So that's actually a pretty easy way to kind of force the player to do new things and approach things and approach areas in different ways than they would normally. Uh, here, this really kind of highlights what I love about this area because there's no obvious way through. They give you several different possibilities and you just kind of have to make your own way. So is my way here the fastest? Almost certainly not, but it's the way I found. And I'm sure when you play through yourself you can find your own ways too. <laughs> also, definitely not developer intended because I jumped up some pipes you can't actually jump, or you're not supposed to be able to jump on top of, so. Uh, a little bit cheesy, but we take those. Alright. I believe that just leaves us the chase level for this world. I actually did a bit of did a bit of research, and this actually wasn't always called Chase Through the Store. Apparently the original name for the level was Chase the Lie. Um, I wonder what they had in mind with that. I don't know. But, as for this, it's it's a chase level. There's not a ton to say about these after the first couple times because they're always pretty much always the same. <laughs> uh, the umbrella kind of saving my jump there. Man, I love the food court that's at these places. I think the last time I ate there you could get a hot dog and a drink for $1.50. That's such a good price. But you can see right here, shaved three seconds off of my time. I think I'd already gotten the uh, best time there, so I didn't get anything new for that. But even when you think you got a good time, you can still get a pretty... Like, you, there's always room for improvement. And we're on to the trials. 
Uh, I believe this one also has three uh, pogo trials. Uh, this first one starts you jumping around the castle, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of different ways you can get up and around the castle with a, when you're on a pogo stick. I did once accidentally get myself stuck uh, down in that little area there. Uh, don't recommend doing that. And you got this one on top of the carts is easy enough, but then you have to climb the tires on a pogo stick, which can be uh, can be a little challenging. Right, we're back. That machine you hear is uh, actually something they have in every single one of these, designed to crush boxes and. Um, once upon a time, that machine was my best friend, so... <laughs> Love seeing it in the game, even though, if I remember correctly, the only thing that's in there is a couple of the uh, collectible cards. Never really get a chance to show those off here, because I already had all of them, or most of them. But that's our first pogo trial done, almost a full minute faster than I did the first time. There's our second one. Uh, running around our food court. <laughs> Fun fact, since this one, this food court is inside, you know that this place is somewhere cold. Yeah, we kind of already knew that because, you know, we know this game's set in Canada, but even if you didn't know this was set in Canada, you could narrow it down somewhat where this store is located. Easy first few, which then just puts us jumping around the meat area with a pogo stick. Or the, I guess the refrigerated area. Maybe a missed opportunity on the developer's part that they didn't include any sample carts. It's just such a, such an important part of the experience to go into a store like this. Either way, nothing too difficult in this pogo trial. And that just leaves us the third one. <laughs> you can see that soda I'm holding. Uh, that actually just makes you run and uh, much faster. So if you're just kind of running around the overworld, it can be, can be fun to grab. Uh, but like the third pogo trial in school, this one is another one where you're just trying to uh, reach the end of each section while you jump around with uh, a lava-filled area. Unlike the one in school, this one is nowhere nearly as punishing, so it's not too bad. Uh, this section's a little awkward, though. Um, as you can see, I'm having a little trouble kind of timing the jump right to get up here much easier solution right in front of me that for some reason I just couldn't couldn't figure out for a few seconds and then finally there you go you can just jump on the pipes to bounce up much more easily than trying to get the big jump and take it that way here we go across the uh, checkout lines right into the lava whoops Sometimes with the pogo stick, uh, especially if you're not looking down, uh, you may have a little too much momentum and you'll just accidentally slide right off the platform when you're not trying to. But no big deal, just quick recovery and we're done with the third pogo trial. Uh, if you're having trouble finding any of the trials themselves, uh, it's good to remember that like the levels, they are actually all in the same area. So while you can get to the other parts of the store uh, in the overworld, you do not need to for pretty much anything except just collectibles. So if you're looking for the levels themselves or the trials, they are all in that first part of the store you're in. But. I love this tiny toy trial. They they do so much with this pallet and shelf layout. Like, there are just so many ways you can sneak around things. 
Uh, so many ways you can miss jumps onto carts and proceed to miss that same jump again until you decide to look for other ways and you're not actually quite tall enough to make that jump. And even with the batteries, yeah, that. No dice. However, I just noticed there, it's actually possible to skip checkpoints in the tiny toy trial here. So, it just goes to show even in the trials, always be on the lookout for chances to skip sections of the level if you're trying to get a quick time. It's maybe a little less interesting visually because you're skipping parts of the level that the developers put a lot of time into, but they're also the ones that set these challenges, so I feel like they were kind of expecting you to do that anyway. Very tight jump. Don't do it the way I did it the first two times. You can actually jump to the pallet with the battery and then cross and never have to worry about that little board that you're just barely big enough to fit on. But just got one or two more, so we're just making our way over to the next one. Jump pads are your friend in big open areas like this. Throws us on the table, and the one on the table throws us over here. And, yep, jump onto the vending machines. And miss the jump pad. No, don't, don't do that. I always feel like there are two ways to handle this, but every time I do what I'm doing here, I uh, fail to jump where I need to, so can you uh, skip there? Possibly. I haven't pulled it off successfully, if you can. Uh, instead, I think it's just easier to go around the intended way. So onto these tables, onto this trash can, which will launch you over here, and you can jump into the kitchen. Uh, just like in school, don't stand on these too long. Yeah, the screen turns red for too long, you die, and you don't want to do that, so. But, with that, we have finished wholesale. <sighs> All good things must come to an end, I suppose. Which leaves us only one core level, but that's for next time. Thank you for joining me. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm Just Graham, and I will see you next time.